totally digging into my chest right now. As you can see. <laughs> I like this t-shirt, what are you doing? Welcome to another Luminar Neo photo editing tutorial guys and in this one we're going to be doing something quite different. In my recent videos I've touched on just how powerful it is that we can reuse the tools inside of Neo multiple times. So with that in mind what I want to do in this video is take a landscape and see if I can do a complete edit with just one tool. Just one being reapplied multiple times. And there's another reason why I'm limiting myself to just one tool. Just one. To turn this photo into this. And that is, I need your help guys. Skylum have come to me and asked me if I could write a blog post for them on five tools you must know for editing your landscape photos. So I'd love it if you guys could help me out and just let me know in the comments, what are the tools that are your go-tos inside of Luminar, could be Luminar AI for uh, Luminar Neo. What do you use the most? What's the best tools you found to edit your landscapes? Please let me know, that'd be amazing. But for now, let's see what we can do with this photo with just one tool. Let's get into it. Just one. Just one. Just one. <laughs> I don't know what all that was about. But anyway, in front of me here, we have a sunrise photo taken at Cave Stream in New Zealand. And the tool I'm gonna to be using to develop this is the trusty develop tool. So how I'm gonna tackle this is in multiple passes. The first pass will just be making sure the overall photo looks good. I wanna bring out all the dynamic range. You can see where the sky is blown out and bleached to pure white here. I wanna see if I can bring back some of that detail there. And because this is a raw photo, I'm probably gonna be able to do that. And also we're losing a little bit of detail in the shadows as well. So I want to make sure that the base that I'm working on overall looks good. So what we wanna do is just grab the highlights, bring those down and grab the shadows and start boosting those up. Of course, we can work with the Luminar default profile, but I always prefer to change to something that matches my camera. And in my case, I like a camera neutral profile. By using something that matches your camera model, you're gonna find that your colors are rendered much more accurately and overall the file is just gonna look better. Now we've dropped the highlights and boosted the shadows. We've brought back a lot of the dynamic range into our file, which is great. However, the downside of that is we've lost contrast. And so what we can do to kind of start correcting that is make sure that we have a white point that we're happy with. You see, if I push this all the way to 100, we're starting to bleach out again. So we basically wanna push this to a point where we feel like we're just starting to get a true white point in the image. And I'm looking just here where that sun is rising. And I'm pretty happy with that. And now I want to do the same with the blacks. I wanna make sure we've got a full tonal range in this. If I push that all the way to the left, you can see that we lose all of that shadow detail that we brought back. And I just wanna start lifting these blacks back up until I feel like we're just starting to get a pure black without losing any of that shadow detail. From here, we can jump into the curve section and we can further refine the contrast if we want to. I could boost the mid-tones up slightly. We could look at lifting up the highlights even further and then we can just bring the shadows down ever so slightly just to make sure that we have a nice range of contrast in this photo. With these changes, I feel like our sky is getting a little bit bleached out, a little bit blown out. So I'm just gonna drop this highlight amount back down and now I'm also gonna just drop the exposure just a little bit. Now we've got the exposure we're happy with. We've brought back as much dynamic range into this photo as we can. And we've also controlled the contrast in our curves panel here. If you're not sure how to use curves, I've created a whole video on this and I'll link it in the description below. But basically by creating an S shape, you add more contrast. If you go the other way and take the curve this way, you're flattening out your image and reducing the contrast. Um, so I'm just gonna put this back to approximately where we had this before. And now we can move on and work in the color section. So what we want to look at here is making sure that we're happy with the temperature. Now, while I want to warm this up and have like a more of a warm sunrise kind of feel to this, I don't want to do it in this pass. You're gonna see why not very shortly, but here I just wanna make sure that the overall color balance, the overall color temperature is looking pretty good. And for me, what I mean by pretty good is a neutral color temperature at this point. We can manipulate it further, but in our initial pass, what I call the technical edit, we want the photo to look as good as it can, almost as if this is how it was when our eyes were looking at the scene. And if we jump from our before to our after, I'll do that again, before, and after, there's not much in it, but you just start to see a little bit more in terms of the details in the overall file, and that gives us a lot more to work with. I would recommend that you hit your sharpening as one of the very first things you do when you're working in this develop raw section. 
Working in this tool in the develop raw mode as opposed to just the normal develop option uh, gives us access directly into this raw data that's saved in our file and that's a very privileged place to be. So in terms of the actual sharpening, if we can apply that straight onto this raw image, that's a much better place to do it. So I'm just going to grab the sharpness slider push out about halfway and I'm pretty happy with that. I think Luminar's sharpening algorithm actually does a really good job. So yeah, we're just gonna leave that there. If I scroll up to the sky by clicking and dragging and I look in the sky here, where we have flat areas of color, particularly darker ones, so in the mountains here as well, this is the best place to kind of see how much noise your file has, how much grain is in there. So I don't really feel like there's any that I even need to worry about. So I'm not gonna worry about noise reduction. I'm not even gonna worry with my optics here because I'm pretty happy with this. If I was shooting architecture and I wanted perfectly straight lines, I may need to correct for some distortion of the lens. But when you shoot in the landscape, Unless you see the horizon line bowing, oftentimes you don't see any of that distortion. So I'll just leave that well enough alone. And we're gonna move on with our second pass of the develop tool. So I've closed that down and now we've baked into the file those changes that we made and they exist in the edits tab here and we can always go back and work on those in a non-destructive way. So we can just carry on by adding another develop tool here. And this is where you're really gonna start seeing the power of multiple applications of this tool. What I want to do is darken down the sky and perhaps some of these shadow areas as well. And I also, also want to introduce some blues into this as well. And now I'm going to get my mask tool by clicking here. We're on paintbrush rather than erase and we want to paint this effect in. So I'm gonna do that with a flow of about, or strength of about 28. And all I need to do is click and start painting over and now when I release you'll see that that just got a little bit darker and also introduced some of that blue that we shifted the color temperature to as well and now I can just build this up in passes because we're doing this at 28% rather than a full 100% and now what I'm going to do is just darken down some of the edges almost like I'm creating my own natural vignette and let's have a little toggle of the eyeball tool to see our before and our after before and after and now I'm going to click to close that down reopen it and I've got a whole new develop tool to work on and this time I'm going to do something very similar except this time we're going to be working on warming this shot up you can see that if I grab that temperature slider and push it to the right we can certainly create more of a sunrise kind of feel but I know I don't want to apply it globally I just want to focus it around where the sun is actually rising and also where it's catching this side of the hillside over here so again I'm going to click on my mask come to the paintbrush tool here and if I push this all the way to 100 you'll see why that's not a great idea because as soon as I've painted that little area there it's so evident where the effect is and the mask starts and stops so I wouldn't recommend doing that just erase that and start again and I'll bring my strength down I can use my right bracket key to increase the size of the brush and I'm just clicking and roughly painting over the areas where I want to apply this effect and as long as I keep the softness set to 100 we have a really nice transition from where the effect is strongest in the center of this brush to where it falls off at the edges and that makes for a nice believable application of a mask okay let's close that down and let's throw another develop tool on there this time i'm going to brighten up the area through here where the stream is running through so let's grab the exposure slider just watching this area here so although we've brightened up the whole image i know that i'm only going to be painting it in where i want it so i'm just keeping my eye focused around this area as i'm making any changes i just grab my brush this time bump it up to about 36 get this done a bit quicker couple of little bonus clicks there and now we can toggle the eyeball to see the before and the after just of that one mask or we can come to the bottom and the eye tool down here on the very bottom and see our complete before and our after before and after if we look to the top right of the screen here you can see that we have edits and appended above that is the number four so if we click on that we know that we currently have four develop tools making up this edit. So I'm gonna just add one more and I'm gonna do that with the purpose of color grading. Yes, that's right, we can color grade through the develop section and we can do that through curves and manipulating the curve. So if we click on the blue tab, that's gonna allow us to pump some blues into the shadows or into the highlights 
or we can take the curve the other way and introduce some yellows. So what I'm going to do is actually bring this point down here and that is going to actually bring some yellows into the highlights. And to balance that out, I'm going to bring the bottom point and bring that up and that's going to introduce some blues into the shadows. Oh, we've probably gone a little bit too strong with that so I'll just ease that off just a little bit and perhaps we want to add a little bit of reds into the midtones and that will add to the yellows and create a more orangey look. And let's have a look at what that looks like before and after, before and after and we could further enhance any color changes just by adjusting that temperature slider again. And then depending on the look you're going for, we could either decrease the saturation so that the scene has a more pastel and softer look to it, or we could get more aggressive and crank the saturation up even further and really enhance that warm sun glow. But I think I'm just going to double click to reset that, leave it as it is. And then as a final touch, I'm just going to revisit curves. I'm going to move out of the blue channel here, avoid green and red. I'm just going to jump back to this one, which is the overall contrast of the image. And what we can do is actually lift up the blacks if we want to. So just so things aren't so dark, I'm just going to click and drag this up just so that we're not having an absolute pure black in this. And now I'm just going to recraft that nice contrast that we had by pulling that point down. If we grab this point and pull it down slightly as well, we're just making this just look a little bit more dramatic and really emphasizing the sunlight here and where it's hitting these rocks over this side. And this is such a cool thing because I feel like I may have just darkened this off too much, but I don't want to come in and just forever be tweaking these little points on the curves here. What I can do is just grab the exposure handle and just bump that up just ever so slightly. And then I keep the changes that I made in the curve section here and I'm also able to just bring a little bit more brightness to it. So let's have a quick look at before we made those changes, those color grade changes. So this was the image as it was, and this is with those changes to the curves and just a slight bump in the color temperature. Okay, let's close that down and it's time for my favorite bit. We're gonna look at the before and after, but as you can see, all we've used to develop this photo is the develop tool. We've used five different instances of it, each with a slightly different purpose and a slightly different effect. And that has taken us from this all the way to this. That is quite a dramatic change, I feel, when you look at the original to where we got to using just one tool. Hopefully you can see the benefit of reusing a tool multiple times. And that is just one tool, the develop tool. Admittedly, it is one of the more powerful ones because it has so many features built into it. But when you consider layering that tool with Luminar's other powerful tools, you really can make a huge difference to your edits. Ha! Lando Norris is really hurting me right now. Enough. Absolutely, I could stop here with this edit or I could take it further by adding some of Luminar's other really useful landscape features, um, but I'm not going to because I want you guys to let me know in the comments what are your favorite landscape editing tools? What do you use the most? I've got nothing else to say. I need to get Lando Norris off my lap with his ridiculously sharp claws. And I will see you guys in the next video. Um, don't forget if you haven't got Luminar Neo yet and want to get it, Skylum are currently running a promotion and I've got a link to that in the description below. I will see you in the next video. I probably won't have Lando with me. It's really annoying. So annoying.